Welcome to the uncensored presentation about the production of inulin out of chicory. Actually, we are running out of time and we are definitely running out of excuses because our planet that was once a cozy home for many inhabitants is evolving slowly towards a hostile ghost planet. And if we don't watch out, Earth will become like Mars. In the last 50 years, we lost like 70% of all the animal species. And by the end of this century, for sure, the polar bear is not going to make it. And we will only be able to see it in pictures and in movies. The globe is definitely warming up. There are more and more forest fires. And we are also running out of letters to name all the typhoons and hurricanes in the world. And actually, we are also running out of excuses about who is responsible for all that. It's us humans. And are we actually doing something against that? What is our attitude? Well, we have developed four approaches. And the first approach is actually very interesting. It's simply to deny the problem, as if you're talking to a journalist. You deny that we are responsible, that there is global warming. Actually, things are like before. We can do business as ever we did it. The second approach is not much better. Unfortunately, it's a popular approach. It's to ignore the problem. Yes, there is a problem, but hey, what can I do about it? And probably it all will go away by itself. The third approach is more the approach from teenagers like Greta Thunberg. They try to motivate the politicians to change their policy. Unfortunately for them and for us, politicians are amazingly efficient with words and promises, but they are less efficient when it comes to taking decisions and finding solutions. But this third approach is going somewhere. Actually, it leads to the last approach, and I would call it the approach of hope. It's the consumer, because of all this publicity, starts to realize that actually he is the problem. We are the problem. You are the problem. I am the problem. The way we consume is the problem. And it are not the politicians, it's not the industry. Do we really need to do five city trips per year with the airplane? And do we really need to use the SUV to do our small shopping? This SUV is only puking CO2. And all these essential questions are raining down over all the consumer products, including cosmetics. But to know whether a cosmetic product is sustainable or harmful or not for the planet, that is a difficult question, because a cosmetic product is the sum of different ingredients produced in a different way. So we need to find out for each ingredient what is the way it is produced and if this way is sustainable or not. Cobiotics is an important supplier of inulin towards the cosmetic industry. And the question is, is our inulin sustainable? Is it harmful or not for the planet? Well, I will already reveal you the conclusion. I don't know. Because, first of all, I don't know how to measure sustainability. And secondly, we sell inulin, so that doesn't really make us objective. On the other hand, sustainability is a too important subject to be put into a sales talk. Sustainability is important for us all and for future generations. That's why instead of promoting how sustainable our ingredients might be, I decided to tell you, to show you uncensored in full transparency how inulin is produced. And then with that information, I hope you can decide whether inulin is a sustainable ingredient or not, and if it's sustainable enough to enter into your product range. But sustainability is a quite vague word. You have to be more precise. Do you mean sustainability towards the environment, 
so that ingredients are not polluting or participating in global warming. Or sustainability towards humans, like fair trade. Or sustainability towards animals, that you promote, maintain biodiversity. I believe that inulin, if it is sustainable, it will be sustainable for the environment. Well, let's start with discovering inulin. It's a polymer, polysaccharide of glucose and fructose. These are one of the safest ingredients in the world. And inulin, a natural polysaccharide, is present in more than 36 different plants. And some of them we consume, like bananas, garlic, asparagus. The inulin that we promote with Gobiotics goes under the name Inutec H25, which is a natural replacement for polluting polyquaternions as a conditioner. Inutec SL1 is a palm-free emulsifier and Prebiolin Fos is a prebiotic protecting the skin. Prebiolin OP is an opacifier replacing polluting polystyrenes. And Prebiolin C90 is a natural thickener replacing polluting acrylates. Prebiolin oral is a special inulin for oral care. And biolin is for the most delicate skin like baby care and damaged skin. The inulin we promote comes from chicory. And the reason is because chicory is the champion of the 36,000 plants. Chicory has the most inulin of all. 17% in the root, but we are not so lucky because most of the inulin is located in the tip of the root, deep in the ground. So when we extract the roots during harvest, we will have to make sure that we also take away the tip. Chicory is grown in moderate climates on a flat soil. And to extract inulin from the roots, basically it's done with hot water. And if you want to have different sizes of inulin, you can still hydrolyze the polymer with an enzyme extracted from non-GMO Aspergillus niger. The inulin can be used in many cosmetic applications, going from skin care to hair care, going from baby care to elderly care, treatment products, rinse off, leave on products, color cosmetics, and the product has all the certifications like EcoCert Cosmos, Natural, Halal, co Kosher. When finally the inulin comes into the water stream as a waste after usage, it is for more than 95.5% biodegradable, which makes it readily biodegradable. But actually all this chicory, where exactly is it grown? Well, it's grown in the very heart of Belgium. Now, Belgium is a quite crowded country, but the heart is quiet, rural, and with a lot of farmland. The regions are called Brabant, Haspengouwen, Hagenland, Limburg, Kondros, and Fania. Probably six names you almost never heard about, because they are not touristic and they are very rural and agriculture. And in the heart of that heart lays a small village, Ore, where the factory stands that produce inulin. But the factory is not new. It is actually a factory built in 1905 as a sugar factory. And in the 80s, it has been restyled towards an inulin production. Now, the factory is built exactly on the same ground of the old factory, and even some buildings are reused. Some buildings are more than 100 years old, and even one machine dates from that time. So this is actually an example of industrial building recycling. But let's go back to the inulin, where it all starts on the field with the farmer. 700 farmers are involved in the growing chicory and production of inulin. They have a contract, because growing chicory goes with certain rules. One of them is not to use chemical fertilizers not to use insecticides. The fields have to be less than 100 kilometers from the production site to ensure low CO2 emissions. The farmers, they get their seeds from Benio. No one is allowed to use their own seeds. In this way, we avoid, we control genetically modified material. 
but each year the varieties are improved with conventional methods to have a higher yield in inulin so that less farmland is needed to make the same amount as now. Also, less diseases are affecting the roots and also we can conserve the roots much longer on the field, which is important because between harvest and processing the roots, several weeks can be between them. And in the past, the roots were deteriorating. Here you can see some activities on the fields. First, in spring, the fields are prepared, then the sowing is start, and finally, you get the germination. But during the germination, you can see that the plants are far away from each other. And this means that soon, wheat will come. And this wheat will overgrow the small chicory plants. And this will seriously affect the yield of inulin. That's why in this stage, herbicides are used. But later on, the leaves are growing and growing and become massive, and they cast a shadow on the soil. No plant can grow under these kind of chicory leaves. And that's why at this stage, the farmer is not allowed to use herbicides anymore. And then comes autumn, and then comes also the harvesting, and finally the loading in a truck to the factory. The harvest has to be done at the right time. This is critical. Because if we harvest too fast, the chicory has not his full capacity of inulin in the root. When you harvest too late, the inulin already starts to degrade in the roots. Luckily, the chicory is grown into six different regions of Belgium with six different climates. And that's why the roots are never ready at the same moment. This is important for the factory because the factory cannot process all the roots of all the farmers in a few days. It takes three to four months. And taking out the root is a hell of a job because we need to take out the tip. That's why special machi machines are designed that will take out the roots with the tip. And on place, the green big leaves are separated from the roots. The leaves stay on the land as fertilizer or they will be used for animal feed. The roots are going to the factory on a truck who is full or small tractors for the small farmers around the factory. And now the roots are in the factory and the processing can start. First, the root goes in a big uh, machine that will cut the roots in small pieces. They will look like French fries. And these chicory French fries comes into the extractor. On one side of the extractor, water comes in, fresh water. On the other side, the roots. This is a counter current process. The roots who are here at the end do not contain a lot of inulin, but the fresh, empty water can still take out the inulin very efficiently. That's why we remove, we extract more than 99% of the inulin. But unfortunately, we also extract proteins which are unwanted and will be later removed with calcium carbonate, which is produced on site in the lime kiln. Later, the inulin is further purified and crystallized, evaporated. Now, the factory contains three special technologies. The first one is the purification, which is done with chromatography. Chromatography is produced on a smaller scale, but never on such a huge scale, but it guarantees pure inulin. Further, the inulin is crystallized. Easier said than done, because crystallizing inulin is a special business. And then the factory has a huge enzymatic hydrolysis processing to assure different chain lengths of inulin. Further purification techniques are ion exchanging to remove electrolytes, active carbon to remove bad smell and color. And especially for the cosmetic industry, sterile filtration is performed over 0.2 micrometer, assuring that no microorganisms end up in the final product. Here you can see the spray dryer and finally the filling station where the inulin is put into bag 100% automatically without interference of humans to limit, even to avoid contamination. The producer guarantees that all the inulin that is leaving the factory is within specification and never needs to come back. 
for the reprocessing. There are 300 different quality tests performed on the inulin daily and several more on the roots when they come in, all assuring that the inulin is safe and from high quality. And then sustainability. I will give you some information to allow you to decide whether inulin is indeed sustainable or not. First of all, the company has rooted in its culture sustainability. Everything that comes from the land will be processed. The roots for inulin, the leaves for animal feed. But also the process is constantly improved towards energy consumption, CO2 emission and recycling. More and more waste is recycled, upcycled and reused. The producer is member of three sustainability organizations. Ecovad is from France, Fairtrade Deutschland from Germany and SAI from Switzerland. The latter one is promoting techniques to perform sustainable agriculture. The company is a member of the 30 most sustainable companies and is awarded with a silver status. But how much energy do we really need to produce one ton of inulin? Well, it's 2.6 giga euro. And during the five years, it didn't reduce although there were many efforts to do so. But what did reduce is the CO2 emission. It reduced over the five years with 30% and it will still re be reduced the next coming years. In five, five years ago, we needed more or less 350 kilo CO2 emissions to produce one ton of inulin. Now we emit 240 kilo CO2 per one ton inulin. We use 1.8 cubic meter water for one ton inulin. And we discharge in the river 1.9 cubic meter water. The reason why we discharge more water than we use is because the roots also contain water. And this water ends up somewhere in the process. And then let's have a look, a closer look at the production uh, the way the inulin is produced. The inulin is first extracted in water at 60 degrees. And out of this comes inulin proteins and water, but the proteins are unwanted. So they are removed with calcium carbonate. And then you get a side stream of proteins with calcium carbonate, which is not a waste, but food for animals. But where is the calcium carbonate coming from? Well, it's produced inside in the lime kill by a reaction of CO2 with calcium oxide, which comes from mines close to the factory. And the CO2 comes from burning coal. But the coal, when it's burning, also produces heat used for the water. And if there's not enough heat, some extra fuel is used. After the proteins are removed, we get a stream of inulin and water, which is black, brown, and needs to be purified with chromatography, ion exchanger, and active carbon. And then you get pure liquid inulin. Well, pure in the sense that the inulin is pure with water. If you do not want the water, you need to perform spray drying. The water is evaporated with heat and below the spray dryer, inulin is crystallizing. It's difficult to say which one of the two inulin is the most sustainable because the liquid inulin does not require heat for production, while the spray dried inulin, the crystalline inulin, needs heat. However, when you transport liquid inulin to the customer, you transport also water. 75% is inulin, but 25% is water. If you transport the pure inulin, this is very efficient because you do not transport any water. And then finally, from the purification comes the, the garbage of the whole process. But this garbage is sugar, proteins, electrolytes, flavonoids, saponins, and they all come into the wastewater. This, gar this garbage is not really toxic. It's actually plant material. In summer and spring, this water can be used to water the adjacent fields, but in winter and in autumn the fields do not need watering so then the water is pure wastewater and will be discharged in the river. 
Lately, there's also a lot of attention for biodiversity because a field of chicory is monotonous. It's not really food for animals. So basically, one hectare of chicory field steals away a lot of land for the animals. But this is, of course, the case with all farmland. A um, solution is to provide the farmers, free of charge, seeds of flowers, different flowers that will have flowers at different times during the year. In this way, we support bees, butterflies, but also small animals like lizards and frogs. Of course, the biggest part of the field is still the monotonous chicory. And then there is also a lot of attention to create attractive landscapes because a chicory field is not only monotonous, it's also boring. But luckily between all the chicory fields, you can still find beautiful places like this one. Thank you very much for your attention. And I sincerely hope I was able to give you a good insight in the production of inulin. And I hope it allows you to decide whether inulin is sustainable or not. Should you still have questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to ask them to Copiotics.